Another monolith appear near Las Vegas. A woman says she witnessed it crashed. Guys, this is very spicy and interesting. So I'm personally not one to believe in aliens, but the amount of evidence I'm about to show you, you might start to begin to believe in some sort of extraterrestrial life. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but yes, your boy Nate, I have personally experienced a lot of, let's just say, personal firsthand life experience with a very interdimensional or extraterrestrial non-human beings in my personal life. And as crazy as that may sound, it's very, very, very true. Um, now, I personally haven't ever seen like an actual like alien or extraterrestrial, as they call it. But I've personally seen uh, certain UFOs in the sky, like firsthand experience. I think I've seen it like two or three times in my life. The two times I remember was one when I was in school, I actually saw a UFO. It was shaped like a UFO, like how you see in the movies, but it was like see-through, but it wasn't see-through. It was kind of like a bubble. That's the best way to explain it. It's like, you know how a bubble see-through, but it's not see-through. So you can kind of see the bubble, but it's transparent. That's the best way to explain how I saw the UFO. And that was in Arizona near Area 51 which kind of makes sense because around that whole area, there seems to be a lot of UFO sightings. Um, and then a second time I saw it was actually when I went to Peru and in Peru, there was like a UFO just like going through the skyline. And I was just like, what the heck is that? It was a different shape and I could actually see it. It was a solid object and it was almost like reflective, like metal. And then I literally saw on the news the very next morning, there's a UFO in the sky in Brazil, the next country over. So it's just like, whoa, I've, I've literally experienced seeing these things firsthand. I've also had another experience before I truly became a born again Christian. Um, if you guys haven't seen my testimony, long story short, I was into spirituality, quote unquote, but it wasn't genuine spirituality. Um, I found out it was satanic. And basically, I saw this like big thing by my bed. And it was just like this black, like big black spaghetti ball or mass. That's the best way to explain it. It was like a meteor shape or something. It was like a spear, but it had, it didn't have like a perfect circle. If that makes sense, it had like bumps all around it. So the best way to explain it is it was shaped like a texture of a meatball or a meteor ball that you see in the space movies. And then I saw like eyeballs all around it. And it was just like black and then red eyeballs everywhere. And I was just like freaked out. But that's what kind of brought me to Christ, a lot of that. Um, long story short, that's what I saw personally. So I have had encounters with like supernatural things, although I wish I've seen things like angels or Jesus himself manifesting to me, like how I see many people say, oh, Jesus came to me in my dream, you know, but I unfortunately didn't have those things happen to me. I kind of see more of like the satanic side of things, which I don't know if that's it's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> but I mean, God allowed me to see these things for a reason, clearly. Um, so guys, enough about me. I want to kind of get into the story. I just thought that would be very interesting to share with you guys, just to add a little validity to this, what I'm about to share with you guys, because I personally have personal experience like with these things. And so I definitely do believe UFOs exist. Do I believe that aliens exist? I don't think so. From a biblical perspective, I think these aliens or greys are really just fallen angels or Nephilims. So basically, we see in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter six, it makes it very clear that there is like some sort of Nephilim or some sort of uh, hybrid human fallen angel species. And I actually want to get into that, guys, because I want to base this video off of the word of God, because I know a lot of people don't believe in some sort of fallen angel or Nephilim. But guys, there's literally so much biblical evidence. And the word of God is something that can be trusted because countless, countless times it has predicted things, has prophesied things, and they're always true. So as we see here, guys, it makes it very clear. 
And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of man saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit should not always strive with man for that also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, which the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and the ima every imagination of the thoughts of the heart were only evil continually. So guys, it makes it very clear in the word of God that there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. So it makes it very clear in the word of God that even after those times in Genesis chapter 6, that there were still those giants. And so it makes it very clear that, you know, the fallen angels, they literally had sexual relations with human women. And as a result of that, they created some sort of hybrid Nephilim species that we call it today. And so I truly believe that these UFOs, it's kind of like maybe like a mixture of like fallen angel technology or some sort of like government technology that they have that they're trying to like test or implement and things like that. Um, I, I believe it could be a mixture of the two. I don't think it's just one or the other. I definitely think that the government and these fallen angels are definitely working together behind the scenes. Um, it's some sort of classified information, I believe. And again, this is just my opinion. And no, I, uh, I don't ever have certain thoughts. If you guys get what I mean, I'm completely mentally sane. Um, because I know when talking about these things, you have to make it very clear how you feel. I am very level-headed, and um, I'm so grateful for life. <laughs> but I do want to get more deeper into this, guys, because I already kind of went over Genesis 6. But I want to go ahead and get into this article, because this article right here states, guys, another mysterious monolith appears the time in Colorado. And it states, Denver, the monolith trend appears to be making a comeback. Another version of the mysterious mirrored pillar popped up without warning in northern Colorado. Its origins are obviously unknown. A Reddit user posted in the Fort Collins subreddit over the weekend saying they went to the structure near Bolivie and the thread. Redditors speculate on the monolith's origin but the details haven't been confirmed. This is not the first time a mysterious or mirror, uh, mirrored monolith has popped up. The phenomenon that started in 2020 reappeared this month. A somewhat similar structure was found north of the Las Vegas Valley over the weekend of June 15th and 16th, according to Nexar's Colas. Wow, guys. I mean, just look at this. You guys want to know the cover up or the excuse that they're using for this? They're trying to basically say that this was some sort of art project or something like that. Guys, come on. I mean, do they think that we're fifth graders? Do they think that we're like dumb? Come on, guys. This is just silly and ridiculous. Not even a fifth grader would believe this, guys. <laughs> and then it states the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Station or department took it down a few days later on June, June 21st. No confirmed connections have been made between the monolith in northern Colorado and the one near Las Vegas. Back in 2020, several monoliths were found across the world. After one appeared at random and rural part of Utah, they started to pop up without warning in California, New Mexico, and around the world, then would appear just as quickly. When the monoliths came from, and what I, they mean, have them been publicly explained, their remote locations have made it even harder at times to figure out how they were installed or how long they were there before anyone noticed. Vox reports the, the slabs are 10 to 12 feet tall. Many speculate their reference to the science fiction movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. Only one of the monoliths, the one installed in California in late 2020, has a known backstory. Locals told the, ad, the news they were inspired by the Utah monolith, a director and Stanley Kubrick's classic movie, so they sought to recreate the phenomenon locally as a form of guerrilla art. It is worth noting that the structure found in Colorado is rectangular as opposed to the triangular shape seen in both the Las Vegas monolith and many of the 2020 monoliths. So guys, basically what they're saying is they don't know the explanation for this. They don't know as to why this thing is just randomly appearing in the middle of the desert. 
However, there is a new station called Inside Edition, if you guys aren't aware of. They're a very popular, uh, I guess, current events like media company. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what they have to say about this, because I think this is quite interesting to say the least. Las Vegas got more than hot temps over the weekend. Las Vegas Metro Search and Rescue spotted this mysterious monolith just north of the city in Gas Peak. The Las Vegas Metro Police Department shared video writing, We see a lot of weird things when people go hiking, like not being prepared for the weather, not bringing enough water. But check this out. Hmm, it looks awfully similar to the monolith that popped up in the next state over a few years ago. That is just wild. <laughs> This 12 foot tall structure was spotted in the Utah desert in November of 2020. The intrepid explorers go down to investigate the uh, alien life form. That monolith was later removed by adventure tour guide Sylvan Christensen out of concern for the environmental damage caused by all the visitors coming to see the wonder. Hit the ground with one of the loudest thuds I've ever heard. As for this in Las Vegas, the police department hopes the clever internet solves the mystery. This is Inside Edition wow. Digital. Right, so they basically have no explanation is what they're saying. So anything they pull up is just nonsense to kind of get the masses to be like, oh yeah, I believe daddy internet. I believe daddy media. I'm just going to believe everything they say. Guys, no, the media is not on your side. The government's not on your side. I hate to tell you guys this. But if you guys don't see how satanic it is, I don't know what will reveal it to you guys this. Um, but the reason why I bring this up specifically is because I wanted to show you guys the fact that, you know, daddy government and the media kind of work together to like have cover ups. And what I mean by cover ups is like, let's say, for example, if we actually did discover that this big gray structure that's 10 to 12 feet tall was, uh, you know, on Earth because of some supernatural, you know, uh, reasoning or maybe because of fallen angels or whatever the case may be, um, you know, they'll do whatever they can to kind of cover it up. And actually there is a, uh, re really interesting show. I highly don't recommend you guys watching. If you get my gist, um, I, I, I watched it and I hated it. And, uh, it's this show called project blue book highly don't recommend if you get what i mean and so project blue book is basically based on a true story and what happens in the show is that basically they discover a lot of real things but they hire very educated scientists and they get scientists from all over the world like from cambridge harvard wherever and they basically get these very intelligent scientists to basically be professional liars and myth busters and so let's say for example if we found uh you know, evidence of a fallen angel and in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, and we found it on the shore that everyone would be like, whoa, this is shocking. And then they would hire some very intelligent, you know, scientist from MIT. And he would say, oh, that's actually not a fallen angel. This is actually just a uh, fake costume that looks hyper realistic. And it was made as a project by a group of Harvard students. Like, you get what I mean? So they basically, that's their whole job is just to kind of make up excuses as to how and why the supernatural realm doesn't exist. And so it's basically just to their whole job is to disprove God and to disprove the supernatural realm. Very satanic and diabolic, if you ask me. And this is why there's always a natural cause or explanation for everything scientifically. And this is why I don't really trust false science, pseudoscience as you may call it, just because of the fact that not all science that we're seeing in the mainstream world is actually genuine science. Not that we can't use science for God, but we can't just use pseudoscience. We have to actually look at the science and the mathematics and all that good stuff for ourselves, because if not, it's very difficult to prove when you're going by it just because MIT or Harvard says it's true. Um, so yeah, guys, I mean, that's how I personally feel about this topic. Let me know what you guys think about this. I personally believe that fallen angels exist. I personally believe that the hybrid species between fallen angels and human, the sons of God and, and, and you know, man's daughters exist because Genesis chapter six tells me that. 
Um, but yeah, guys, I personally think that this is some sort of like fallen angel technology or something like that, that they found, and they're obviously not going to release it to the public, but let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Uh, please share it with someone that you believe this could be edifying for. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and don't forget that Jesus Christ loves you. He died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins three days after resurrected. And if you believe in him, you shall be saved. God bless you guys. Your boy, Nate out.